So once we have the desired channels on the control surface, we can select a channel and now from our overall channel view, we can control whatever controls are visible on the screen at this time. So EQ, compressor threshold, noise gate threshold, um, input gain. For more detailed control, we use the navigation buttons to zoom in to any area of control processing. Once we're in the zoomed in view, again, we're now working in a touch sensitive way and the screen gives us um, visual support for whichever area of the console we happen to be poking at. I'll just go through the processing strip with you. So first of all, these are the functions of the mic amp. So we have the um, two gain controls. So the first gain control is a real remote control of the analog mic amp on stage. The second gain control is a digital trim. So you have two levels of gain control to get the mic amps behaving exactly the way you want. So you get control of the gain structure through the console. You get to choose how much, if any, of that famous Midas coloration uh, you want to apply to the audio. Um, high and low pass filters, which both have variable slopes, 12 or 24 dB per octave for the high pass, 6 or 12 dB per octave for the low pass. Uh, input delay, and we can also change the processing order of the channel so we can have the EQ either before or after the dynamics processing. We're now navigating to the uh, input compressor. We have a choice of four different types of compression control, which are, well, which we call um, corrective, which is a peak sensing compressor, which has exponential attack characteristics. Adaptive, which behaves like most modern RMS sensing compressors, so there's a high degree of, of uh, automation to the way the console deals with the audio. The creative compressor, which again is a peak sensing algorithm, which has a linear attack. And the vintage compressor, which includes some coloration artifacts as well as uh, amplitude control. Uh, once we've decided our um, preferred compressor type, we then have all of the usual time constants you would expect on a compressor, plus a three-way adjustable knee, sidechain filter with a choice of three different filter widths for frequency conscious compression, and also the ability to listen to the compressor's sidechain while it continues to pass full range audio to the mix. This allows you to set up things like uh, de-essing filters uh, during the performance so you're not limited to having to set those up during the sound check. We also have an external connection for the side chain so we can use any other audio either within the console or external to the console uh, to operate on the compressor's side chain. Navigating down to our noise gate. Again, we have variable threshold all of the usual time constants you'd expect on a noise gate, an internal sidechain filter with three choices of filter width, and again the ability to listen to the gate's um, sidechain filter on the local monitors while it continues to pass full range audio to the mix. Again we have a, an external connection for the uh, gate's external trigger so we can use an external event to remotely open and close the gate. EQ. Um, the EQ is a typical Midas type four band equaliser. Um, it's not fully parametric in that the, the four filter bands have fixed areas of responsibility. So we're still calling it treble, high mid, low mid and bass. Um, you do however have a choice of different filter types on the high and low filters. So you can operate it as either a parametric filter or you have a choice of three different types of shelving filter. And again, these are available on both the high and low filter positions. 
pan control, software fader representation and very, very straightforward routing to stereo.